Hi students and welcome to your next math lesson. Today we're looking at chapter 6, lesson 6, multiplying decimals by powers of 10. Your objective for today is that students will be able to multiply decimals by powers of 10. All right, so first I want to go over what it means to be a power of 10. So powers of 10 would include numbers such as 10, 100, 1,000, etc. In other words, if we look at a power, the base is going to be 10, and your exponent could be any number. So 10 to the first power, 10 to the second power, which is 10 times 10, or 100, 10 to the third power, etc. So these are powers of 10. Today we're going to look at how to multiply a decimal number by a power of 10. Now in a previous chapter, chapter two, we looked at how to multiply whole numbers by powers of 10 and we just added a certain number of zeros. It's a little different when we multiply decimals by powers of 10. The reason we cannot just add zeros to the end of the number is because if I were to add zeros here, because this is decimal place value, it doesn't change the value of the number at all. So here's one way to multiply this decimal by a power of 10. You could do the actual process of multiplication. I'm gonna just very quickly show you that. Remember when I multiply by decimals, I like to remove the decimal point in the beginning and then place it at the end. One, two, one, two. So when I multiplied one and 28 hundredths by 10, I got the product of 12 and 80 hundredths. And we also know that that's the same as 12 and 8 tenths. Now you can avoid doing the multiplication with a little trick. And again, this works when we multiply by powers of 10. So instead of just adding zeros, what we can do is move the decimal point in our decimal number. So here is our decimal point. When we multiply by a power of 10, we can slide that decimal point to the right a certain number of times when we're multiplying by a power of 10, such as 10, 100, 1000, etc. So here's how that would work. What I'm going to do first is write out my decimal and I'm putting my marker where the decimal point was originally, okay? Then I'm going to look at my power of 10 and I'm going to count the number of zeros if it's written in standard form or I'm going to check out the exponent if it's written in exponential form. Since this one is just written in standard form, I'm going to count the zeros, and I see one zero in my power of 10. That means I need to take my decimal point and move it one unit over, one hop over, one place value position over to the right. Why am I moving it to the right one time? Because I'm multiplying by 10 and 10 has one zero. So this was my original decimal point location between the one and the two. If I move it to the right one time, it now lives between the two and the eight. So I took it from here and I moved it one spot over to the right. And that is now the new location of my decimal point. Does that look familiar? It should. When I did that multiplication earlier, I did get 12 and 8 tenths or 12 and 80 hundredths. So multiplying by a power of 10 is mental math. 
Let's do another one. All right. For this example, I'm taking 56 and 24 hundredths times 10 to the second power. I'm multiplying this decimal number by a power of 10. It's a power of 10 because 10 is the base and it has an exponent of two. So I could do the long multiplication if I wanted to, but I don't have to, this is mental math. Remember that 10 to the second power is 10 times 10 or 100. So what that means is I'm taking my original number my original decimal of 56 and 24 hundredths, and I'm moving the decimal point to the right because it's multiplication, and I'm moving that decimal point over twice. I know I move it twice because my exponent is two, or I could look at that standard form of 10 to the second power, which is 100, and there are two zeros. So your exponent or your number of zeros. It's two. So I wanna move my decimal point twice to the right. Here's where it started between six and two. Ready? Once puts it after the two. Twice puts it after the four. And I only need two spots, so ready? Once, twice. That's the new location of our decimal point. We get and this would make it a whole number now because it lives at the end of the digits. So our product is 5,624 because the decimal point lives over here on the right. Let's do another one. Eighteen and five tenths times one hundred. I'm multiplying this decimal number by a power of ten. So I know I can move my decimal point. I can move it to the right because it's multiplication. So let's rewrite our number. Oops. Pardon my dogs. Starkey, stop it. And I'm moving my decimal point to the right. Its original location was between the eight and the five. When I count my zeros in my power of 10, there are two. So I know I'm moving it to the right two times. Now, if I pre-plan this and imagine where it's going to go, my decimal point, one time would put me after the five. Well, where do I go from there? If you find that you don't have any more places to move your decimal point to, I suggest you put in a couple of zeros. This will help you to see where the decimal point goes. So let's go back to our original number, 18 and 5 tenths. The decimal point was right here between the 8 and 5. And let's move it twice to the right. Once puts it after the 5. And twice, now we can see the exact place, puts it after a zero. So what is this goofy looking number? One, eight, five, zero, point nothing. So we don't really need this guy anymore. It's one, eight, five, zero, which is 1,850. When the decimal point lives on the very right and there's nothing after it, it's a whole number. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. Join me again for our next lesson. Bye.